All right, thank you, everyone. Uh, my name is Arvind Jain, and I have Dominic here with me. We work on making the web fast at Google, and we're very excited today to talk about how browsers can predict user activity to make pages load faster. So before we start, how fast is the web today? Well, not that fast. Um, we collect a lot of data at Google. Uh, we've been collecting data in Chrome as well as Google Analytics uh, on how fast the web is in the real world. And the answer is not that encouraging. You know, it takes between five to seven seconds based on which data source you believe to actually load a web page in the real world. That's a long time. And mobile is actually even worse. Uh, it takes over 10 seconds to load a web page. And this data that we collect is actually from the best mobile phones on the best networks. So the web is actually not really getting that fast. To make matters worse, web pages keep growing in size. From the data in HTTP archive, the average page of web pages now is over a megabyte. Well, that's, that's really, really large amounts of data. Um, not only that, web pages keep getting complex over time. The amount of JavaScript code on the web pages, as well as the amount of images, um, is just you know, getting uh, bigger and bigger over time, as you can see from uh, this chart. I think thanks to great work from everybody, everyone in this room, over the last few years, we've seen solid improvements in technology to actually combat uh, you know, those challenges that we just saw. The browsers today are much faster than they used to be a few years back. The networks are also very fast, uh, specific, you know, especially on mobile uh, with the advent of 4G. The networks are much, much better than what they used to be before. Um, device hardware, as always, keeps improving over time. We've got really powerful cell phones these days. Um, and uh, for the notebooks as well as for desktop also, the hardware is actually definitely keeping pace and uh, getting better over time really, really fast. And most importantly, there is a focus in the industry now on designing pages which are fast. Uh, performance is one of the key factors in web page design these days, you know, thanks to Velocity and all the people here. But that is still not enough to make the web instant. Uh, you know, as you can see from the stats, you know, it's still taking quite a bit of time to load web pages. But I think there is some hope. Um, humans are actually not that fast. Uh, you know, we still take time to do activity on the, uh, uh, on the web. So here's some data on user behavior in web browsing. In Chrome, it takes about three seconds for a user to type or select a URL in the address bar. Now, most of the times, it's actually just selecting the suggestion that Chrome already provides to you. So typically, you know, users would actually type maybe one character or two characters, and all they have to do after that is press Enter. But it still takes them uh, over three seconds in average. That's a lot of time. Similarly, on Google Search, uh, it takes users about 15 seconds to select uh, is a result and click on it. That's, again, a lot of time. And all of this time is when the browser actually knows with a very high probability what page the user is actually going to visit next. So could we make use of that time? And that's the concept behind pre-rendering in Chrome. In Chrome, we've actually built quite a few learning models to predict user activity in a variety of contexts. Also, uh, using HTML5 link rel pre-render tag, developers can actually provide hints and, and advice to the browser on what pages the users are actually likely to visit next. So in both of these cases, what Chrome does is actually, you know, it's a fairly simple thing. It fetches all the resources on the page and loads the page in a hidden tab. And when the user actually navigates to the page, you know, three seconds later or 15 seconds later, we just swap in that hidden tab and often provide the user 
with the instant feel. You know, the page just loads instantly for them. So now, Dominic will talk about details of the pre-rendering implementation in Chrome Omnibox. Thanks, Avant. So, uh, as Avant just said, we, we spend a lot of time trying to predict where uh, users are going to navigate. And in Chrome, we have the Omnibox, where, which is the center of all the user navigation in Chrome. So it seems like a good opportunity to maybe learn something about uh, user behavior, maybe learn something about um, predicting user navigations. So we're already providing suggestions to the user. Um, we already do a lot of work to try and make sure those suggestions are as relevant as they could be. Um, and when we see the user interacting with the Omnibox, it's, it's an opportunity to learn that user's browsing behavior. Um, what sites do they tend to go to, uh, maybe even certain times of day, or when they're in certain locations, things like that. And it gives us the ability to develop a really good prediction model. Um, also, it turns out that when the user is uh, interacting with the Omnibox, there's very little else going on that the user is really interested in, which means that there's not as much contention for resources. So we're free to start speculatively pre-rendering pages. So I'll just run through the basic implementation um, fairly quickly. Um, what we do is we track whether or not a user takes a particular suggestion. We map what the user typed to that suggestion, and we keep track of how often the user takes the suggestion versus how often they don't. Then given uh, some user text and a given suggestion, we can calculate a confidence level, which is actually just the probability that the user is going to take a given suggestion given what they've typed. So for example, the user types C. Uh, we get a couple of suggestions, CNN, Comcast. The user types N. And uh, there's, there's only one suggestion left, which is CNN, which the user then takes. We end up storing a data structure that looks something like this. Um, we can see that uh, the user's type C, and then the user's type CN. Uh, we have the suggestions for whatever the user typed, and we have a hit and miss count, as I, as I said. So then over time, what happens is that the data structure evolves to something like this. And in fact, you can look at your version. Uh, if you have Chrome 20 and above, you can look at what we've tracked for your browsing behavior, uh, as private as, uh, as, as that is. Uh, you might be interested in seeing it. Uh, and uh, you can see in this example, when the user types C, we're not really sure where they might be going. It's 50-50. But once they type N, we can be fairly confident they're going to CNN.com. And so what happens next? Well, next browsing session, the user types C. We get the same suggestions as before. One of them is selected by default. And we know the confidence is one, so we can already start pre-rendering before the user's done anything else. And now I have a, a video that I want to show uh, that is a demo of, of pre-rendering in action. So first, you're going to see some Omnibox pre-rendering. On the right is the pre-rendered version. On the left is the not pre-rendered. And here, the users type cnn.com into the browser. And now both browsers are going to hit enter at the same time. And I think you'll see the difference pretty clearly between the pre-rendered version on the right and the non-pre-rendered version on the left. Um, same browser, same machine, same connection. The only difference is that learning model. And now uh, something that, that we presented last year was Instant Pages, which is the uh, pre-rendering from uh, Google Search. And again, the same thing, pre-rendered on the right, non-pre-rendered on the left. This time, the user is uh, searching for CNN. And we have the same suggestions. And the user is going to click on the link at exactly the same time on both sides. And again, I think you're going to see the difference between the pre-rendered version and the non-pre-rendered version on the left. So some key results that we found since we launched this. We launched Omnibox pre-rendering a few versions ago now. Uh, we rolled it out as an experiment, and it, it was very positive, so we've now rolled it out fully. Um, it turns out that about a third of Omnibox navigations end up being pre-rendered. 90% of those end up being used, which is a statistic that we're quite proud of, because accuracy is very important for us. And between 15 and 20% of those navigations end up being instant, less than 10 milliseconds. And we end up saving about a second per Omnibox navigation. Now, a second per navigation doesn't sound like very much. But when you add this up across all of the users that we have, you find that we end up saving a massive 30 years across Omnibox and Search every day for people browsing the internet. So why should you care? Well, quite simply, your site is going to be pre-rendered at some point by some users. You probably want to check your site's compatible. If you're following the spec, that's not going to be a problem. Uh, we've taken great pains to make sure that we don't break the internet. Um, but if you're off spec at any point, you just might want to check. We introduced the Page Visibility API, which allows you to know when you're pre-rendering so that you can act accordingly. 
And you might want to consider this for your own site. If you know your users flow through your site, you might want to consider providing a hint to Chrome to start pre-rendering. And there's a couple of links there, one to the white paper for pre-rendering and one to an application that we put together that will pre-render your site and allow you to test your site to make sure that it works. Thank you very much. Uh, I've been Dominic Hammond, Arvind Jain from Google. Thank you.